every year, I cannot resist a NARS palette launch. Like every single time they launch a good palette, I'm like, I don't need it. I have all of these colors, but then they always end up in my hand. So today I'm gonna review the new NARS Holiday Stargaze Eyeshadow Palette. Yeah. I don't know, I always feel a little bit of guilt picking these up, but I just get so much satisfaction from it. And we'll talk about why, but anyway, I picked this up from the NARS website for $60. And I love ordering from NARS. They have really good shipping. Now $60 for this is pricey, but NARS is one of those luxury brands. But I feel like you get what you pay for a lot of times with NARS, which is why I'm always excited for these. In case you missed it from this holiday collection, I did also review, and it's already up, the Rising Star Cheek Palette. This launched a little bit earlier than the eyeshadow palette, so I will have that review linked down below. And then, you know, a week or so later, this guy popped up on the NARS website. So I will have down below linked everywhere where you can purchase this, but I do recommend purchasing it from NARS. But if it comes to Sephora, maybe wait for the VIB sale. We'll see. NARS's website does do shop runner, so I was able to get free two-day shipping, so it came really quickly as well. So let's get into the details of this eyeshadow palette. It is a limited edition palette for the holiday season and when NARS says something is limited edition they mean business. It's actually limited edition. Now it might go on sale if it doesn't sell well so NARS stuff will go on sale but it actually is limited edition and they describe this as a holiday edition palette of 12 intensely pigmented eyeshadows in velvety neutrals and shimmering pops of color and when you purchase the palette it it is gonna come in the same box as the cheek palette if you have that. Just a little bit shorter. So this is a Stargaze eyeshadow palette. The palette is made in Italy and it has a 12 month shelf life. If you need to take a look at the ingredients, feel free to pause the screen right here. Now the component of the palette, once again, is the same style as the cheek palette. It's the black lacquer, which does show your fingerprints, but it's also very easy to clean off. I find the print this year to be a bit juvenile. I feel like packaging has been much prettier in the past, but it's grilled on me. It's fine, it's very holiday-y, and here is the back as well. Wow, you can see I've um, really held on to this manicure. <laughs> anyway, so that is all you need to know about this part of the packaging in terms of how it compares in size to the cheek palette so the cheek palette is just a wee bit taller it's the same length across so eyeshadow is just a wee bit smaller now as with most NARS palettes a little bit difficult to open you know sometimes you gotta dig your nails in there and we do have a mirror the palette does stay up by itself it doesn't fold back flat but I like when a mirror is able to hold up by itself and then here are the eyeshadows I mean nothing new here but I couldn't resist this lavender shade called out to me lights are down so that you can get a better feel for this palette so it's a pretty neutral palette with these pops of purple over here even this can kind of be a little bit more on the neutral side. Now, if you're familiar with NARS, I mean, a lot of their palettes tend to have this same brown, neutrals, pop of purple, plums. Like, this is very typical, and you will see that when I do comparisons. And I know it, and I talk crap about NARS, but I just love NARS, so I keep buying them. But it is a really pretty color story, and with that lilac shade, it definitely stood out to me this year. Now, if you cover the purple here. This palette is super duper boring. NARS, I would love to see a little bit more um, originality here. So I'm the sucker. I still bought it and I still think it's, it's really pretty. Yes, I do knock the other luxury brands for coming out with the same thing every time. NARS is no different, but I still buy from all of them. So let's go ahead and swatch the colors here. So it looks to me as though this palette has five true mattes, a couple satins here, and then five metallics. Let's see. We're gonna swatch like this. You guys know I don't press too hard with my swatches. I really like to get a feel of the formula. Ooh, they feel good. Here's how they're looking on my finger. So Hayworth is a glitter antique gold. Really not that glittery as they describe it. Ah, there's my, oh, actually, I guess you can see the glitters there. Heartbreak is a matte taupe brown, very beautiful. Hollywood Lover is a shimmering, soft, cool pink. Oof. 
These feel really good, guys. Getting the next ones. Okay. Nouvelle Vague is a matte soft mauve. This is a true mauve, very, very pretty. Go Deep is a matte rust amber. Okay, you ready? Los Feliz is a shimmering copper bronze. <sighs> it looked a lot more creamy and pigmented in pan, but it still is gorgeous. I'm gonna dip in a second time. Oh, that's pretty. Going into the purples now. Instant Stardom is a satin lilac. So this is a satin shade. It's pretty sheer. We'll have to apply this on the lid. Lights Out is a shimmering purple. Has a little bit of coolness to it. Very pretty. And then Double Trouble is a matte deep oak brown. So it actually looks quite cool if you take out these two shades. I actually really like that. Final three shades here. Swoon is a satin rich eggplant. Headliner is a shimmering dirty rose. And then Walk of Fame is a matte orchid fuchsia. Now taking a look at this overall, this is a stunning color story. This is right up my alley in terms of an everyday palette and I think that's why I was so attracted to this palette. Of course I can dupe all of these shades a thousand times over within my collection and within NARS's collection itself as well, but just the way that it's curated is a palette that I'm tempted to reach for on an everyday basis. So if you have similar tastes to me, I think you will really enjoy this color story. It's very to my taste, repetitive and boring, but I don't even care in this case. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully the quality matches up. I think it will. It's swatched like typical NARS quality. Very, very nice. So let's go ahead and get this on the eyes. This look is gorgeous. I'm so <laughs> excited to like have it all done because this is right up my alley for an everyday makeup look that's a little extra glam. So I think I used like eight of the 12 colors. So we did okay. So I'm gonna start off with this shade right here. This is actually one of the ones that I was the most excited for in this palette. I don't know, brands sometimes don't do as good of a job with this kind of shade. It's a true cool toned mauve shade. It is powdery, so you will get some kickback. Because it's a lighter shade though, I didn't tap off my brush, but you can see it gives you a little bit more depth than you would expect if you have my skin tone. I do have the ABH eye primer as my base, so that kind of brightens the eyelid because it's got a very light color to it. This shade is so beautiful. It's gonna come in handy for so many purple looks. This is actually my favorite shade in the palette, I think, just because brands are scared to go there with this color and how perfect is it? So stinking pretty, the perfect transition color. This was a BKBD 201 brush, by the way, one of my favorite transition color brushes. All right, we had to go into the lilac shade. So this is a satin shade and I'm not super in love with it. I'm actually just gonna run it on the eyelid for you to see you don't get much pigment to it. So I'm using it to kind of create a little bit more of a lilac blend in the crease, keeping it kind of low. But I wish it had more pigment and it's a little bit loosely packed so it doesn't stick to the lid like I would prefer. Now it's a fine shade. It's not bad quality. I'm not gonna go as far as to say that. However, I have used shades that are better quality. I know for a fact Kaleidos and Odin's Eye, I like their lilac shades a little bit better than this. And that's to be noted because this is a $60 palette. It's pretty, it got the job done. We have a lot of lilac peeking through the look, but it's more sheer than I wanted it to be. And now it's quite wearable. So if you're afraid of lilacs and using shades like that, then I think you will like this. But for me, I wanted it to look exactly like it does in the pan on my eyelid and it's just not. It's a more sheared out version. Um, you can see this, what is happening here. It looks like, I don't know if this is product or something on my skin, but it's highlighting something that's very odd. Maybe it might be a dried up piece of the eye primer. I don't know, but because of the satin finish to it, it is really emphasizing that. With the BK Beauty A502, we're going into the satin eggplant shade. Again, their satins are not my favorite because they don't really lay down the pigment. And this is a really messy shade. As you can see, I got a lot of fallout. So I wanted this to add a lot of depth and it just, it just didn't. And I know it's a satin shade, so it's not going to give as much as the matte would, but their satins really don't adhere to the eyelids that well for the price point, because I'm getting a ton of fallout from it. It's actually quite pretty though, right? <laughs> 
it did blend itself. So it's not bad quality. Oh, I take it back. That looks really pretty. I felt like on this eye though, I had to really build this up and it was really messy, but it's working out a little better here. So I'm eating my words. Oh wow, that actually applied really pretty. Never mind. That, that was nice. Still feel the way I do about the lilac, but I like that shade now. But now I do want to go into this matte deep shade. This is gonna kind of solidify the depth. This is a reference number 14 brush, but everything that I wanted the eggplant to do, this shade is going to do it because it's matte. So it's gonna stick to the eyelid better. NARS has a really great matte formula. How pretty is that? I think this eye is gonna end up having more depth than the other eye, I'll have to correct that. And then keep it low, but I am kind of getting it across the crease here so that our eyelid shades will pop a little bit more. And let's get into the eyelid shades. So I'm gonna start off with this dark shimmery purple. Now you have to use a finger. These are like a stickier formula, so it's not the smoothest application on the eyelid. And if you have very textured eyelids, be careful of these shimmers because these have a tendency to look a little chunky and textured on the eyelids. So, I mean, you can see what I mean. It's not bad. It's just something you should note before purchasing if you like the look and think it will complement your eyelids or not. This shade is so pretty. It's a shame it doesn't apply well with a brush. That's a good shade, it's so pretty. <laughs> and then you can put this all over the lid and get the coolest lilac smoky eye. But I wanted to play with another shimmer and we're gonna do this one right here. Now this is the same exact texture as the purple shade. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of room in the very inner corner area, but I still want this pink to pop through to add kind of a different element to the eye look. And again, you can see it's very thick and textured, so it does emphasize any fine lines that you might have on the eyelid. And then I'm gonna take an old Trish McAvoy brush and go into this shade. Now this shade is smoother than these three right here. These three are gonna be that more sticky kind of formulation where you can't apply with a brush. This one is more powdery, so it picks up and applies really nicely with a brush. So there is kind of some differentiation there in the formulas with the shimmers. How pretty is this? I love this shade as well. I love the colors that they put in here. They are the prettiest tones, my style to a T. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take the gold color right here, which has those really fine glitters. It's a slicker shade. It's not one of those stickier formulations. And it's a gold, but it's actually quite bright. And it works really well, I think, in the inner corner. And I think it adds a pretty different color element. I'm gonna pop on some concealer really quickly and clean up, because we got a lot of fallout from that satin shade and we'll do the lower lash line together. Keeping it pretty simple to what we did to the top, I'm gonna start off with my favorite shade. Just gonna run this along the lower lash line. This shade is particularly powdery. It has that extra kickback compared to the rest. And we're gonna go into the satin shade. I'm gonna be very careful because like I said, this one is messy. So tap off that excess girl. Put that on the outer half of the lower lash line. And then of course we need the darkest shade. Focus that in the outer corner. Then I'm gonna take the lilac shade on a small brush and I'm gonna fill this in, in the inner part of the lower lash line. Since the pink is so subtle in here, I'm going to go ahead and get this shade. This one is gonna struggle being applied with a brush, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> it just doesn't pick up with natural hairs. It definitely is gonna need like a synthetic brush and even then, it's just real PC, but anyways. I'm just popping it right underneath where it is on my eyelid just to have it pop through. Come on, that is so pretty. I still managed to get full out though. I'm gonna take my concealer brush and hopefully clean that up. Let's see how well the cheek palette coordinates with the eye palette. Hard to open, Nards, why do you do this? Okay, I have to keep it kind of flat because one of the colors fall out and hmm, with how purpley the eyeshadow palette is, I would have thought that the cheek palette would be a little bit more purpley. Anyways, I'm gonna mix this shade and this shade. And go boom, boom, tap off. Trying to use a light hand. I don't want it to be an obnoxious amount of color. And make sure you check out this review if you want more details on this palette. Trying to keep the cheek color pretty subtle. Get a little bit on the nose. And then let's go ahead and use this shade. 
as a highlight. This one will be pretty natural. Looking good. Let me put on some liner and lashes and we will finish off this review. First of all, we need to talk about how much I love this look. <gasps> I definitely am going to have to recreate this look again because I have to work out in a couple of hours and I don't want to take this off. But... <sighs> This is right up my alley. So just the fact that I can get this look from the palette makes it a winner for me. But anyways, before I get into my final thoughts about the palette, I did want to do a couple of comparisons that I had with a couple eyeshadow palettes. The first one that this reminded me of from NARS, and you know, NARS is always going to launch a neutral palette with a little pop. So this is the Extreme Effects palette, which came out a couple of years ago. And what reminded me of this year's palette was that it had the purple colors and the neutral colors. So let me show you them side by side. So here is the Stargaze palette. Palette, and then right next to it we have the extreme effects. I thought there definitely could be similarities like right because they both have the warm pops and the purple pops the gold pops right so the top is the stargaze and the bottom is the extreme effects yeah there's definitely similarities so it's up to you to decide if you need both you probably don't but I much prefer the new Stargaze palette over the old NARS palette, so that's just something to note. I also wanted to pull out the Summer Unrated palette from NARS. It's the one with this packaging. And honestly, these two are kind of close. Now, it doesn't have the Lavender Pops, which is my favorite part of this palette, but a lot of similarities. Obviously, this one has more shades as well. So the top is the Stargaze palette, bottom is the Summer Unrated palette, and obviously, couldn't find dupe for dupes, couldn't find every shade, but I feel like they're pretty close if we get rid of these lavender pops. It's pretty much the same palette, so if you have the summer unrated and you don't care for the purple pops, I think you're good. You don't need both. That puts me in a sticky situation because I love both palettes. I love the summer unrated. And I love the look I have right now with the Stargaze palette, so. I mean, I've already answered my own issue here. I have both. <laughs> And there we have it. Those are my thoughts on this new NARS palette, the Stargaze palette. Overall, I really do enjoy this palette. This is one where I'd recommend to wait to see if it goes on sale or if you can get a coupon code if you're absolutely dying to have it. It is a very nice palette. I do recommend it. There's just a few things that you should know before purchasing it, like these shades right here, very, very textured. They can emphasize texture on the eyelids. The shade can be pretty messy. But other than that, I think this is a very high quality palette from NARS. I love the look that I got with it and I feel like there's a little bit more versatility here for different kinds of looks you can create with this palette. However, it's not a unique palette. If you have NARS palettes from the past, I would say this is not a must have. But if it's been a while since you picked one up, you want some good NARS quality, I do really enjoy this one and I'm pleasantly surprised. So that's all I have in terms of reviewing the NARS Holiday Collection. I think these two are all I'm gonna get at. And I'm happy I have both of the combos together to share with you guys. Let me know your thoughts below. Do you plan on picking this up? Are you interested? And tell me how much you like this look because I really like it <laughs> and I don't want to take it off. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and found it helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel to see the upcoming reviews. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.